All right, today we're going to be uh, disassembling the back end of a Kawasaki Prairie 400. It's got a solid axle, and these 400s are a common issue is the rear differential on these. And I'm just going to show you how to replace the brake shoes on here, disassemble the right-hand side, then we'll move over to the left-hand side. What you're going to want to do for the take the hub off, you're going to have an inch and a sixteenth socket and I use a half inch. Uh, sometimes you can be on there tight. They've got a cotter pin that runs through there. You can grab a pair of side dykes is what I typically use and um, remove that cotter pin. I try to stay, straighten out the wires there and then pull this straight out of this uh, nut here. Go ahead and grab your inch and a sixteenth socket and uh, pull this nut off. There's a larger washer here and then your hub's able just to slip off. Occasionally, if these uh, become sort of welded on there with rust and other debris, um, you might have to use a hammer to tap these off. I try to turn it when I'm doing that to kind of tap on all the sides. That way, uh, you're not getting one area that's just getting banged up. Now on these, these can be a bit of a challenge. I've loosened them here already because of the time that it takes, but what I generally do is grab a, a Sharpie first thing and just mark there. So what I do is take, Take the Sharpie, make one mark, and then I take a uh, chisel, and you can do this um, without, and, and still be able to reuse this. I just kind of am careful. I don't get too close to the edge. So I take, and I'll, I'll find a spot here, make a little mark, and then I'll start tapping it this way. The other thing that you're gonna do, you see a bungee strap here, I hooked this, and if you have your if you have your brake lines hooked up already, you or still, you can uh, just tighten this way down. You wanna tighten this arm, so that the whole entire axle isn't spinning. If the axle's spinning and you're tapping it this way, it's going to, uh, you're never gonna loosen these nuts, you're just gonna spin your axle. The mark on these nuts is just so I know that we're making progress, okay? You can hit it one time. If it just slightly moves a little bit, you know that what you're doing is working. Um, you wouldn't have to make the mark, but it just um, makes it known if you're moving at all. And uh, then once you get them loosened up, a lot of times I'll grab channel locks and um, that just goes a little bit faster than tapping on it, then it doesn't destroy the nuts. Then what I do after with these is put them on a hard surface and I'll kind of just take a small hammer and tap down the, the areas that I've chiseled on. And um, most of the time these aren't damaged enough to where you've got to replace them. You can obviously replace them, but most of the time you don't need to. Got a larger washer here. This just simply pulls off of there. And then we've got around the edge here, You've got Phillips screws. Sometimes they're Phillips, sometimes they're eight millimeters. And we're gonna try them with, with an impact. Sometimes when they're Phillips, especially back here where they're constantly in water and debris, uh, they can be a challenge. And this is definitely gonna be a challenge here. So I grab an impact driver like this. And uh, we'll try to do it without breaking, any, breaking the housing here, which is kind of a common problem. And then before we get too far, we've got to remove that skid plate on the bottom there. If you don't have an impact driver like this, I'd suggest getting one if you're doing any kind of maintenance repair stuff because it is a, kind of a lifesaver when it comes to Phillips screws. We've got this skid plate here. We've got 12 millimeter screws coming in from the side. And then one coming in from the bottom there. I won't be able to use an impact on that one. And this is just a skid plate here, kind of protects this bottom um, brake assembly. A lot of times those load up with dirt, so when you're washing your floor there, you wanna make sure you clean that out so this bottom assembly here doesn't get so rusty. Then we'll continue with the impact driver and remove all these Phillips screws. When I do get plugged up with dirt, you wanna make sure you clean them out before you put your impact driver on there. Otherwise, you're just gonna round that screw off. Once you get them loose in there, most of the time you can use an impact, electric impact or pneumatic. Okay, at this point we can take this uh, bungee strap off because we actually want this to spin once we get this housing off of here. There's, this is a mount and that's how you mount the skid plate. So you wanna make sure that that goes on there the way that we took it off. It's the clear bottom screw and then it goes up towards the front. So the skid plate mounts, that's one of the mounting nuts for that skid plate. Now you can take a screwdriver and I suggest using a fairly large one and there's grooves 
in this housing that you're able to get your screwdriver in without causing any damage to the seal there. While, what I a lot of times do is put the uh, cover underneath there. It kind of helps catch any debris. Comment? Drum is off, just pull it off. Now if you've got this engaged, obviously it's gonna spread these shoes. You're not gonna be able to pull this off as easy. So um, what I suggest doing obviously is take this bungee cord off if it's tight and this is, this kind of loosens itself up and so that you can pull this off. And there's your drum, that drum is actually in very good condition. And then we'll go ahead and pull those shoes off. And those shoes are just, uh, take sore clips there and then this side's not attached to anything. You can see, you can see those that just move freely like that. So we can go ahead and either pull these springs off, a lot of times I use side dikes to do that, or a lot of times what I'll do is just go ahead and pull those um, sore clips there and um, they're, they're snap rings and you can just pull these out. If we're removing the entire assembly, which we're gonna do, Grab a 12 millimeter. No, that's actually a 14. And it's back behind those shoes. A little bit hard to see, but you don't actually have to pull those shoes to remove this. So four 14 millimeter bolts. And that assembly just pops off of there. Um, we're going to pull this cable for, uh, I guess this cable's already disconnected. And then I would, if you're gonna tap on this panel here, be very careful, it is aluminum, and it tends to break fairly easy, so. There you go, popped off just like that, so. Now that this panel is off, this caliper, there it is there, these shoes are actually in really good condition. We've got some oil, somebody must have lubed them up somehow. And uh, so we'll have to take care of that. Now to go over here to this side, we've got our differential. We've been letting this drain for a little while. This oil is thick on these differentials. And this actually had a little bit of um, water in there uh, because of the um, speedometer cable that is pulled out of that. We've got your, uh, your pivot bolts here. We've got 14 millimeter bolts holding the swing arms on here, 17 millimeter bolt going through this bottom shock here, and uh, then again, 14 millimeter bolts holding that differential on. I like to use a swivel. I'll show you what I mean by swivel here. When I remove these differential bolts, and that just kind of allows you to keep your socket up here, but then remove those nuts. And then we've got 14 millimeter bolts holding the uh, top of this differential on to the um, swing arm here. And we'll go ahead and just continue removing this. Uh, we'll pull these 14 millimeter bolts here that hold this swing arm. Um, a lot of times we'll leave the shock hooked up till last. That way we can kind of pivot the entire thing if we need to but that is uh, disassembling the rear end on a Kawasaki Prairie 400.